happy to have you on the show today. That's a super awesome, colourful background. You Thank you so much. My, what I'm into <laughs> having competitions so who has the best Zoom background, but I think I'm, I'm slowly taking the lead here with the graffiti. No, you, you're majorly taking the lead. You're inspiring <laughs> me, actually. My very blank wall. It has some <laughs> dimension, but no, it yeah. does get the job done. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. Um, I'm so happy to talk to you because you've been, you've been inspiring other people and specifically young people from an early age. I'm quite sure that you, um, you started your um, journey into being an entrepreneur as young as eight years old. Can you yes. tell me a little bit about how you got started? Okay, right. So I was at a, uh, I was at a pretty standard day school when I was growing up. So classic. So every morning, morning, the teacher would always ask, uh, "So what did everyone do on the weekend?" All my mates would always say, uh, "I went to a rugby match. I went to a football match. I did this, something, something like that." I would always say, "Oh, actually, I went to this concert, or I went to this uh, graffiti tunnel, or I did this." It always be a bit more obscure than the the classic uh, football game. So then my mates would start saying, so Cenk, what are you doing this weekend? Because normally what you're doing seems quite fun, so I thought I'd come along with you. Uh, then that started happening quite a lot. Then that escalated to the point where their parents started talking to my mum, saying, you know, what's Cenk doing this weekend? Because uh, his, his plans seem quite interesting. My son wants to come along. And then, so then after a few weeks of that, it got to the point where my mum my started writing an email to like three parents who were like my good mates' mums and saying, here's what Jenks doing this weekend. Your kids want to, if your kids want to come, here's how to do it. Here's, and we can all do it together. Basically, that went on going and that actually picked up some trends. And then that email started getting forwarded out to lots of different like communities of parents across England. And it got, it got, we realized like, oh wow, okay, that's kind of taking traction. People are clearly liking this. So we decided that, you know what, this isn't really done yet. And we can make a website or a company out of this. So then about, a few months later, so I was, I was eight, nine years old at the time. A few months later, I did a show and tell on the concept of, like, just the mere concept of a website about what, how that would work. I did a show and tell about that. Got really good feedback from that. Then uh, about three years of umming and ahhing later, whether it was a good idea, not a good idea, how he would do it, what it would, what it would be, what sort of, like, refinery and honing from the uh, show and tell. A while later, three years, we said yes. I'm going to make the website. And then it was at that point who we had our first employee who actually at the time was my guitar teacher as well, which is how we knew him. And he seemed to love the idea. So then we got him on board and then we had our first employee for a year. So that was May 20, 2015, 2016, May 2016. Then a year later, May, April 2017 was when I cool kid the website first came out. And that was become the first that was the first website as such. And then after that, maybe two and a half years later, that brings us to November-ish of 2018, like end of 2018. Then we decided, you know what? This is cool, but I'm growing up. It's uh, the name I call kid, ironically enough, isn't actually that cool anymore. And we kind of need to become a bit more mature, a bit more... Uh, a bit older as such. So then we had the idea that we're probably going to change the name about, we can do a bit of moving around. And then throughout all of 2019, we decided, you know what? Yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to change the name. We're going to change the age range that it's based towards. And we're basically, we didn't know this at the time, but we ended up restructuring the whole website, actually. So that, so then, uh, last, literally fast forward all of 2019 until about last week, uh, was we were building up Thread, which was the new name of the website, spelled T-H-R-E-D. So like Thread without the A, effectively. And then uh, a few weeks ago, three weeks ago maybe, we just soft launched a website. So that is very much accessible to everyone who's watching. Uh, please, www.thread.com, please and thank you. Uh, and yeah, that brings us to now, where we are about to hard launch in a week, because the soft launching was pretty successful. We're happy with that. And yeah, that's, that's from eight years old to 15, which we're around now. You're 15 now. As of, yeah, as of literally a few weeks ago, it's my birthday. Excellent. So you've taken us all the way up to present time. That's brilliant. Can you tell me how you fit being an actor into all of that? 
and tell me a little bit about that. Uh, basically, so right now, I'm in a bit of a weird stage of my acting where I'm too, especially because I look older than I am a Sarge, I'm too tall and look too old to play a, uh, to play like a 14 year old or 15 year old. And it's also much easier to get a really young looking 16 year old because when you're 16, I don't know if you know when you're 16, you don't need any of like the parental chaperoning. You know, there's much more, much less restriction on what you can do with child actors because you're no longer a child actor as such. So it's much cheaper, much easier to just get a young looking 16 year old as opposed to a older looking 15 year old to play the role. So a bit of a weird phase now, but previously when I was doing a lot more acting, I would, it basically just came down to a lot of scheduling, uh, knowing when my free time was, knowing what I wanted to do with that free time and getting everything done within that free time as such, while also Absolutely. still having the Netflix. <laughs> time for Netflix. And, and cool. also just in, in terms of you're building your platform, that obviously takes a lot of time to build that kind of network. I mean, obviously you've got hmm. your, your community that you've already built with the website and your idea. So you've got all of that community right there. But tell me a little bit about specifically your Instagram page, because I think that is your main platform. Um, yeah. Talk to me about that and um, what you want to use your platform for. Yeah. Well, it's worth mentioning, I think my Instagram is definitely the biggest platform. I think the main platform is probably the website, because that's kind of like, yeah. I use the Instagram to power the website as such, as opposed to the other way around. But ah. I, yeah, well, like when I started, I'd use a big Instagram following and say, everyone go check out my website as opposed to, because that's kind of the website was how it all started. But then it just so happened that my Instagram grew a community quicker than our website. So then we tried to harness that as well, which is quite, actually, it worked quite well, actually. Uh, but yeah, so uh, I, I think the platform Instagram is actually quite easy to use, especially when you get to like, when I, it was a massive change. It took forever to get to 10K. Once you get to 10K, you can start swiping up on stories and all of a sudden gives you so much like insight and knowledge about your audience. So then all of a sudden I knew, uh, I was able to harness the website much easier than my Instagram, sorry, much easier because I knew where or where every follower was from. I knew what times they were active. I knew like about like the geography of stuff like that. And I also, and so it became much easier to use them as such to then generate a uh, flow towards the website. So yeah, I have found it quite easy to use the platform. That is how you use it as such. Yeah, brilliant. And, and part of your message is that you want to inspire other people or other actually other young people to mm -hmm. um, go after their goals. Talk to me a little bit about that. Yeah. Uh, well, okay, well, hmm. Okay, so my advice to start for young people who are going after their goals, if that's what you're looking for, Sarge. Yeah. Uh, I've got two, it's in two sections, because I, I get quite, I lost a lot of times, it's quite a, I feel, I feel like I'm quite ready for this answer. Two sections. I've got two golden rules, and then I've got some just other quite useful points, as such. So the useful points, I, I did a public speech about this, was make a storyboard of your idea. So that's putting loads of post-its up, getting some blue tack, blue tacking paper to the wall, just make, just visualize your idea. And you should have seen my room when I had the idea. It was, I had at least one wall, properly like the size of a large TV, just covered in paper. And that was what, that was my storyboard as such. Mm -hmm. And so my first point is make a storyboard because it's gonna really help you uh, take it from an idea to reality. And that's kind of the first step, which is what you want. Yeah. Next thing I said, uh, the next thing I really found useful was finding some mentors. Uh, find, I call them an idea board of directors. So it's a bit like a career board of directors, but for your idea as such. And that's about four or five people who you're really quite close with, who you can give advice to. You listen to them. They listen to you. Good advice. Great. Yeah, four or five of those. They really help. Really important to learn your elevator pitch. Because when someone asks you, especially when you're young, and then you say, oh, yeah, I have a really good idea for a company. And people are like, what, what's your company? And you can't really go through the whole shebang with them. So you've got to narrow your idea down into two or three sentences, 45 second pitch, bing, bang, bosh, there you go. That's the idea. That was really useful on how to convey your message. And also that's really useful way to gain a community as such individually. And 
the last piece of my little bit of advice would be that it's you should really start now the subs because it's cheaper than it ever was before with stuff like aws count computing just makes it super super easy to fail the subs so like 10 20 years ago when you were to fail on an idea or it wasn't exactly you're going to plan that would have cost you lots of money but nowadays you can use the same amount of money and fail 10 times over so my piece of advice would be do it now because it's really easy uh, okay my two golden rules i'm quite quite happy with these basically uh never be afraid of failure but be afraid of regret because regret is what really it, uh, it's much more expensive to have a life full of regret than to fail on a idea of a website as such i mean something i quite like to think about is how many people do you think thought of an idea for facebook like facebook or thought of an idea like amazon before mark zuckerberg and jeff bezos did and i bet you right now they're all kicking themselves because mark zuckerberg and jeff bezos were actually the ones to do it and you'd much rather be the guy who did it as opposed to the guy who claims he had the idea first and didn't do anything about it. Absolutely. And, yeah. And the other, and the other uh, golden rule is much more about the psychology of it, is that if you treat your idea like an idea or a dream, it will always be an idea or a dream. It will never come to fruition. But if you treat your idea like a company and you actually think of it as a company and think of it logically and realistically, then you're going to find it much easier to make it a real, realistic thing. So yeah, amen. Those are my golden rules. Amen. Amazing golden rules. And I'm sure our viewers um, will uh, be jotting those down because that's, uh, that's really, really so. great advice. But thanks for that. Yeah. Um, I actually want to hear your elevator pitch. Do you mind? Uh, yeah, sure. Okay, so, I'll do, okay, so for yeah. Thread, which is the website right now, uh, Thread is four things. So it's a media publishing, consulting, and production company aimed at older teens and young adults with the Generation Z from our founder, uh, yeah, such, <laughs> to all of our writers who are borderline Generation Z millennials. Uh, millennials. Uh, and that's how we roll. Uh, we have created a digital space that is shaped by youth culture. Like our, our motto is such. is shaped by youth culture, powered by social change. And in addition to our editors and in-house writers, we're actually starting to build out a global network as such of writers across the world who are writing locally about the what we would be doing but for their address as such so yeah that's that's thread in this list wow podcast. fantastic so go to go to thread.com and go and have a look at jenk's yep. uh, brand new website that that just got its soft launch um, and thanks all for joining us on the show. I, I also want to talk a little bit to you now as well, Jenk, about negativity and how the kids reacted to you at school when, you know, you, you got this idea, but you created this whole community. Talk to me a little bit about that. Honestly, most of my friends were like, okay, that's cool. Like none of them, I, honestly, I would have done the same thing. Honest. If one of my mates came to me and said, yeah, I'm going to start a company. I'd be like, okay, that's cool. Well done. I, I like, it's because I wouldn't, that's not something that you hear every day. So you don't know, really have a prepared answer for that kind of thing. So most of my friends were yeah. pretty, they were like, okay, you know what, you do you. I'll help out if you want any help. And you just have fun doing that. And I don't think any of them really thought I was being serious. Honestly, I, I wouldn't think I was being serious as far as them. But I mean, here we are today and my friends are all very supportive about it. And yeah, they loved it. Uh, on the negativity side, they're actually... Surprise! At, to my surprise, there was a lot less than I thought it would be, especially on social media. People have kind of just realised, and I've realised that if you don't like me, don't follow me. That's that's not my problem. So, and people are pretty good at understanding that, and it's pretty, generally pretty positive, which I'm quite happy to say. And pretty simple, pretty simple. I can yeah. tell that you like Elton John because he's right behind your head. He is. He's are you just. A fan? I'm a massive Elton John fan. Massive, massive, massive. I'm also I'm a massive to go to one of my shows, John yeah. fan. <laughs> I, I thought, yeah, I love the film Rocket Man. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah, Fantastic. yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was incredible. It was yeah. incredible. Saw it a couple of times, actually. It's a brilliant film. Yeah. Um, yeah, good. Okay, so let's talk now a little bit about your ambition. What's coming up next for you and where do you see yourself in 10 years' time? Honestly, really don't have that much of an idea. I want to build out thread as much as possible. As I said, make properly 
really fulfilled the whole dream of having a massive global network of uh, writers. Really try and do as good work for social change as possible and kind of see where it takes us. You know? I no, I have no strong, hard, fast plans for the future just yet. Okay, and just talk to me a little bit about your support system. You talked about having a close group of friends that you, you know, include in your business and ideas and your circle. Does that circle include your parents? Are they entrepreneurs? Um, talk to me about your, your support system. Yeah. Uh, they're not entrepreneurs, but they were very supportive as such in the sense that they, yeah, they were very, very helpful, I must say. And my mom's over in another room. Love you, mom. And, Hi, mom. Uh, uh, yeah, they were very supportive and they were very useful. And I'll go back to what I said before, the, my, the rest of my support group as such was my idea board of directors. So my four or five mentors who really helped me make my idea come to fruition. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. And um, tell me a little bit about uh, role modeling. Do you have a role model? And um, if you do, who is your role model? And what would you do if you met them? You know what, I, I, I feel like I've got quite a lot of role models, depending on which aspect of my life I'm kind of talking about. So like for acting, you see like an incredible actor would be one of my role models, like Tom Cruise, for instance, epic actor, awesome role epic. model. If I was Love. talking about entrepreneurship, Tom Cruise wouldn't be my go-to role model. But like someone like Simon Sinek or someone incredible like that would be much more role model positioning for that aspect of my life or music wise, like an artist. So I, I definitely wouldn't say I have one role model, but I've got many across different careers and such. Okay, tell me, what would you do if you met Tom Cruise? What would you do I with him? That's the better question. What would you do with Tom Cruise if you met him? I know I feel like give him a pretty big hug and say, well done, that's pretty, that's pretty cool what you've done. That's fair play. Uh, I don't know. I'd probably watch a Tom Cruise film with him uh, I feel that could be quite funny. I've always wanted to. Want, I've always wondered about like what actors think when they watch themselves back in like major films. Yeah. But, yeah cool. I've watched Tom Cruise film with Tom Cruise. That's why I answered that question. <laughs> That's excellent. All right, and and let's talk a little bit about your charity work because um, I know it's a big deal for you um, in terms yeah. of helping others and especially young people. Let's talk about your charity work specifically and what you do. Yeah. So I generally associate myself with uh, two or three charities I've worked with really closely and I and we have quite a good relationship with. Uh, firstly, uh, Jeans for Jeans, massive charity. I did quite a lot of work with them two years in a row now, I think. I did uh, yeah, four bits of work across the years and I, uh, yeah, that's probably what I associate really highly with and obviously I love what they do and everything they do and I've done photo shoots with them and the whole whatnot as such. Uh, the company called uh, The Youth Group which was created by a guy called Jack Parsons who's a very close friend of mine and basically what they do is they basically they their motto is we're improving the odds for young people so they'll take young people and they'll give them advice and guide as such as to how to uh, how to make their lives better, how to become better leaders, how to start a company. Basically, as they say, improving the, odd, improving the odds for young people. So really trying to help them through, get some really good life skills. And I think the last one is Founders for Schools, who I'm on the, well, I'm really close with because I'm on the marketing board with them for their young marketing, Generation z as such. And what they do is they are the middleman, for instance, for when a school wants to take a entrepreneur or a role model or such in any career to speak at their school. So uh, entrepreneurs, role models would sign up to Founders for Schools, say, I'm free on all these dates. And then schools would go to Founders for Schools and say, I need people for these dates. And then they would make the link between this whole massive collection of role models and a big collection of schools who want speakers and they'd connect. And that's, yeah, that's a very good Wow. Point. It's so interesting because you're involved in so many different things across the board, which is fantastic. I'm so excited to watch you continue your career. That's really, really great. Yeah, it's really amazing. Um, so you have tons of people who've um, joined us today on the live. I'm sure a lot of these people are your friends. I'm trying to oh, wave at everybody. Oh, God. <laughs> 
<laughs> it's really nice. Thanks for joining us, guys. I'm just wondering, um, Jane, if there's anything that you want to say just as a closing message or, or anything you want to say to some of the people who've joined us today. Uh, you know what? I'm going to get the, the kind of uh, the plastic side out and say, please, can everyone just quickly go to www.thread.com and give some feedback because that is really, really, really super appreciated. And that's exactly what we need right now. As much feedback as possible. It would be lovely. Yeah. And, uh, and I'd also like to say on a bit more of a, on a deep point, uh, that social change really, for websites as such, really has to be the, the main focus point. Because Generation Z, and I speak for myself here, and I hope more than myself as well, that I really care and I will choose websites that I read about and I will associate myself with companies who really care about social change and environmental good and wh whatever aspect of social change they choose to be aligned with. I really do care about that a lot. So if you are thinking of starting a company or think of building a brand for yourself or something along those lines, think of going online to the public eye, really do try and harness that power because it will work very, very, very well. And I can say from my perspective that I care about that very much. So, yeah. Great. And give me a good example of social change. Like, give me an example of that. Uh, I mean, like, give it a good example of a website who's doing that. Yeah. I mean, Andy Das is doing that massive uh, water, uh, doing the massive, like, cleaning the oceans, uh, big project. God, who else? Uh, I'd like to say that we're doing quite well and not using that much plastic around the office. Uh, Again? Uh, God, what else? Okay, now you said that, my mind's been pretty flooded. But uh, uh, 350.org is a massive uh, website who are doing loads of stuff, which is really good. Actually, everybody go on to that right now because I really do highly associate myself with them. Um, I love everything they do. Uh, there's a oh massive project called uh, oh my god I was talking about this yesterday uh, global citizen global citizen and yeah, they're doing of lots of really really yeah you, I'm sure you've heard of them yeah, yeah and they're doing lots of really good work uh, common table creative is that what it's called yeah common table creative one of my yeah. mates actually and their basically their aim of their company was to build restaurants around the world and only source food from about a mile away to try and reduce carbon footprint in their restaurants and yeah now those are kind of my those are the first ones that come to mind when you ask but yeah yeah that's brilliant that's brilliant good well um please uh, say your website one more time just to just to so close up we want pe as many people to go there as possible yeah of course www.thred so thread without the a thred.com yeah please there do write yourself onto that give us some feedback my email's at the bottom of the website somewhere, so if you have any questions, email me. Much appreciate there that. you go. If you have Thank any you questions, so email Jenk. Yeah. And then follow him on and Instagram. Also, Jenk yeah, so on. my Instagram should be... My, my Instagram is literally in your live here, so you can go through there. But also, the Threads Instagram is just Thread, spelled the same way, T-H-R-E-D, and it's mag, like magazine. So Thread Mag is the Instagram. So please, everyone go follow that, please. Thank you very, very much. Absolutely, absolutely. And so inspiring to talk to you today. Thanks for being Thanks a guest so on the show. I really appreciate you talking about your journey. Thanks so much. You're very kind. Yeah, it, it's, it's really um, exciting and inspiring for other people to listen to where you came from to where you are now. And it was like 8 to 15 that you, yeah. you've been incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you. You're very kind. Thank you absolutely. everyone for coming as well. For everyone who came through here. Yeah, and thanks, thanks so for much. joining us, guys.